There are a lot of NBA teams this season that are expected to do good in one form or another. One of them is by far the Golden State Warriors. Because after two years of debilitating injuries and a rousing play in playoff performance, the team is looking to be at full power with the return of Clay Thompson soon and is already off to a 4 0 start. Not the least of which is because of their biggest star in Stephon Curry, who, as usual, is not just playing out of his mind, but is being very gracious towards how his teammates are doing. Allow us to show you how Stephon Curry praises Gary Payton II. Gary Payton II. The question tossed towards Stephon Curry after the Warriors' 119-107 win over the Sacramento Kings Sunday night was pointed, yet he responded as if he was truly glad to hear it. He was asked if Gary Payton II's terrific performance in the victory exhibited the value of having the team fill its 15th and final roster spot. 1,000%, he said firmly, a split second after the question was completed. Curry was among the veterans urging Warriors management to fill that spot, and the pleas intensified last weekend when the management waived four players, including veteran guards Avery Bradley and Peyton, both of whom specialize in defense. Management during training camp never committed to signing a 15th player and actually considered opening the season without filling the vacancy. One less salary to pay. When Bradley signed with the Lakers, the Warriors coaching staff, teeth gritted and fingers crossed, hoped Peyton would not land elsewhere and that management would relent. He remained available and the Warriors pounced. Peyton's work on Sunday validated the team's desire to keep him. Coming off the bench, he played 17 minutes, contributing 10 points, one rebound, one steal, and generally a stellar defensive performance. It's not typical that the last man on an NBA bench, a six foot two guard, makes a significant impact in the third game of the season. Curry laid out the assets Peyton brings, the on-ball defense, but also the movement and instincts he displays on offense, the crazy six foot eight wingspan, and the hoops, as Peyton's first bucket was a transition dunk off a Curry lob. Defensively, he gives us an edge, Curry said, and then he knocked down the two threes, which was huge. If he's going to get open shots, he has to take them. We just want him to stay locked in, stay competitive, and stay focused on when his moment comes and show he can do it. Getting irregular minutes can be a tough gig, but Peyton, who has spent six years scratching and scrapping to earn a regular job in the NBA, prides himself on dedication. I've been doing it for a while now, and it's really my job to stay ready at all times, he said. Just make sure I'm ready to do whatever I've got to do to be ready as soon as I hear it's go time. I've been doing it for a while now, so it's pretty much my job. And if he continues to do his job well, then the Warriors are going to have a deep bench with defensive and offensive presence to help them push even further than they're already doing. Curry being Curry. Curry scored 23 points, grabbed six rebounds, and handed out four assists Tuesday night in the Warriors' 106-98 comeback win over the Oklahoma City Thunder. Following the win, Curry again became the only player in Warriors history to record at least 100 points, 25 rebounds, and 25 assists through the team's first four games of the season. The only other Warrior to do so was Curry in the 2014-15 season, when he went on to win his first NBA MVP. Through four games this year for the undefeated Warriors, Curry has totaled 116 points, 33 rebounds, and 25 assists. That's good for 29 points, 8.3 rebounds, and 6.3 assists per game. At the start of the 2014-15 season, Curry totaled 104 points, 26 rebounds, and 27 assists. Those numbers come out to 26 points, 6.5 rebounds, and 7 assists per game. He went on to average 23.8 points, 4.3 rebounds, and 7.7 assists per game. While bench players like Damian Lee have been a huge factor for the Warriors starting 4-0 for the first time since the 2015-16 season, Curry playing at historic levels doesn't hurt by any means. He isn't slowing down now, and it looks like that won't come for a long time. This is a bit of a contrast to how last season went Curry-wise, because that version of Curry started out very slow and then lit up in the back half of the season and went on an all-time scoring streak to the extent that the Warriors were able to reach the play-in game that they only barely lost to the Lakers. 
while obviously they won't win all 82 games, or will they? Even when Klay Thompson returns and supercharges them even further, if they keep this pace up, they'll be in the playoffs without having to do a play-in at all. Especially since Curry is still nailing the three. Yeah, there's a reason why Steph Curry is the best pure shooter in the history of the NBA, according to many. He just makes shooting look so dang easy, especially when it comes to the three-pointer, which he's already rocking this year. Curry now not only holds the longest streak in NBA history of consecutive games with at least one made three-pointer, but he also sits in second place as well. The two-time NBA MVP saw his streak of 157 straight games with a three-pointer snapped on November 4th, 2016 in a 20-point loss to the Los Angeles Lakers when he went 0 for 10 from deep. Three nights later in the Warriors' next game, following Curry going ice cold, he responded by breaking the three-point record at the time with 13 makers from beyond the arc against the New Orleans Pelicans. That begs the question, When's the last time Curry has gone a game without nailing a shot from distance before starting his new streak? That came on November 8, 2018, when Curry scored just 10 points in 26 minutes against the Milwaukee Bucks before leaving with an injury. Through the Warriors' first three games of the season, Curry is shooting 38.9% from deep on 12 attempts per game. Sunday night was just the latest on a long list of ways Steph has shown he's the greatest shooter the game has seen. Being the Warriors again. It almost feels like a lifetime ago that the Warriors were carving out a dynasty for themselves in the NBA after many years of being in the middle of things. Because once Steve Kerr came along and had Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Klay Thompson, and certain other key role players like Andre Iguodala, they went on a tear that rivaled some of the best legacies out there. They went to five NBA finals and won three of them and should have won four if a key suspension didn't happen. Thanks a lot, LeBron. And then, in their final NBA Finals of recent memory, key injuries to Clay and Kevin Durant made it so that it was basically impossible for them to beat the Toronto Raptors. Clay was out for two years because of his recurring leg injury, and thus many wondered if the Warriors would ever really come back, especially after Curry hurt his hand in one season. But then, last season, Steph showed that he still had what it took to lead his team to victory and the playoffs. And that was with him only having half a good season, really. So now, imagine him doing what he's doing now throughout the season and then getting Klay Thompson back and his role players like Gary Payton II doing what they need to do. That sounds like a pretty stacked team to us, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's still early, but looking at the Western Conference right now, there's plenty of room to make an impact. Expectations. So based on their hot start, what are the expectations for the Warriors this year? Well, right now, the West is a bit of a mess. The Lakers, the Clippers, and others aren't doing so hot right now. The Mavericks and the Jazz are off to a nice start, but as many seasons have showed, you can start off great, but then fall off the wagon. Right now, it's fair to bet that the Warriors, should things hold up, will easily be in the top four seeds of the West, guaranteeing that they won't be in the play-in game and instead have a full series for the first time in three years. But again, it's still early. Not to mention, the impact of Klay Thompson can only be speculated on and not fully known until he arrives. But Warriors fans have a lot to be hopeful for. So, what do you think? What do you think of this look at Steph Curry and how he is already getting his team off to a great start in both the win column and helping them feel part of the team, no matter their position? Do you think this is indeed the year that the Warriors will get back to where they were before it all came crashing down? Are you putting them in the finals? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on the channel.